record okay so welcome all of you and we are in the 10th chapter om sada shiva samarambham shankara acharya madhyamam asmada acharya paryantam vande guru paramparam sir can i still guru, yeah yeah please 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 गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरुर् साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः थैंक यू थैंक यू हरि ओम वेरी नाइस नाउ वी आर नोइंग लॉर्ड्स ग्लोरी एंड वी हैव सीन इट इज इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स डिफरेंट प्लेसेस इन डिफरेंट सब्जेक्ट्स ऑल अराउंड अस नाउ द क्वेश्चन टुडे विल बी हाउ डू वी सी दिस is it a way to see this children has it been given in the last few verses can anyone tell me how do you see this glory the last few verses they have said so i can see this in my daily life i hope you also the first thing in a life in the morning you see sun and when you go to the bed you see the moon these two things are definitely seen almost every day only on a no moon day or a solar eclipse right so these two are glories of god the luminaries god has said moon is is his glory so that's why in our tradition we have what is the surya namaskara so we do salutation to god's sun god and this keeps our physical strength well in well being and sandhya vandanam when i was discussing with purvik he does it two times a day it can be done even three times a day sandhya means the twilight zone of the day when the sun rises then when it settles in the afternoon and when it sets in the evening all these three times sandhya vandanam is to be done so basically you yes sir yes sorry for interrupt um yes. so when we do uh, sandhya vandanam for three times in a day we call it trikala sandhya vandanam correct very good and if you do that it is very powerful even if you can do one time your memory is sharp you are brighter you are you grasp very well so that's so powerful so one in the morning what is namaskara is for health physical health the second which generally evening or early morning is for mental health so that is why it's important the sun god is so important for us in the last few verses we have seen that bhagwan is answering to krishna's question that where can i see your glories and how many glories do you have for which krishna says i have plenty of glories not one two or thousands lakhs and trillions and infinite but i will tell you 72 important glories out of them and then he starts saying that i am there in every living entity in this world beginning middle and end of it means not now take an example of a ocean if consider the wave has been started there is a time for the wave to begin and you know all the waves are temporary they will settle down again where can you even answer even a tsunami comes where does it go back sir to the ocean exactly so there is every wave small big large has a time limit duration so the thing which has a limit in time sense it has a beginning and end ocean was there from the beginning and it is there after the end of the wave similarly lord vishnu the adi dev the the thing which the, the lord which made everything to be, uh, begin with so we cannot have a time limit for it that's why he was at the beginning the middle of this world and even in the after the end of this world that's what he wants to say and in 21st verse he started telling us the glories where do you actually see him so vishnu said amongst the sons uh, of aditi i am the vishnu why am vishnu among all the luminous objects the brightest object is sun marichi amongst all the maruts and moon amongst the stars in the night 
so he has given is trying to tell you different ways where you should see him then samaveda amongst vedas indra among celestial gods and amongst all the senses the mind which controls other five senses and amongst the living beings i am the consciousness here he is talking about very subtle thing that the consciousness and then he again elaborates that rudras to be known in among all the shankaras among the semi celestial beings and demons i am kubera and i am agni among the vasus and meru among the mountains the meru parvat is a is a as swastik said very clearly it is a huge thing in the brahmanda around which everything is running around rotating around and all the lokas 14 lokas are and on top of it is brahma ji sitting there right swastik if i am right yes sir and today's class we start uh, with swastik's verse 10.24 over to you sir now i request everyone to chant along with me for this verse guru purodhasam cha mukhyam maam purodhasam cha mukhyam maam vidhi partha brihaspit brihaspatim vidhi partham partha brihaspatim स्नेस so from 23 and now he continues by saying that amongst all priests he is brihaspati so the next slide but if we study the shrimad bhagavatam which is another different place where we can also see krishna as a speaker he says that he is vashishta among them now this complication is not to put people into arguments about which of them is correct and which of them is wrong this is because these two are very much eligible for this for this rank now if we see correctly brihaspati is actually the guru of the devtas he yeah, he is known as the kul guru or house sage who takes care of everything he takes care of the advisory he also takes care of teaching the children and vashishta is also considered brahma putra or son of brahma due to his immense amount of spiritual energy after this he continues he states that of all the army commanders the people who command armies he is kartikeya also known as tanda the son of trayambaka shiva and after that he states that of all stagnant water reservoirs which is of all saline water pond lakes rivers ocean he is the ocean the largest reservoir and to which most uh, most bodies normally flow to yes. so so that is my end of the verse thank you everyone special thanks to sachin sir thank you yes thank you very much so we have seen again four more important uh, luminary uh, important uh, glories of lord one of them is ocean and we will see this in the churning of ocean story in the end of the class so remember that ocean whenever you go near the ocean or a river you can see that lord is within this and you pray it now we move to 25th verse this is i think nayana or uh, yeah yes sir can you add my am i audible yes yes nayana go ahead maharshi naam bhrugur aham maharshi naam bhrugur aham giram asmakam eka aksharam giram asmakam aksharam यज्ञानाम जपयज्ञोस्मि 
So the meaning of this verse is I am Rigu amongst the greatest seas, great seas, and the transcendental home amongst the sounds. Among chants, know me to be to be the rep rep reputation of the holy name. Amongst immovable things, I am the Himalayas. Mm. What God says in this that He is in the things which are completely excellent. Then the story of the faulty components. Uh, so there was uh, so it seems that in Japan uh, so um, uh, an apparel company ordered one thousand components from uh, Japan and they and they said that uh, we uh, they said that they need a thousand components and ten of them can can be faulty so like two three months later Americans got a parcel. And and there was a big box and a small box. So in that there were um hun, uh, uh there were uh, there were uh there were uh hun, nine, nine, there were thousand components in one the larger box. In the smaller box there was ten components and one letter also. In that letter uh, the the CEO of the Japanese company wrote that it was easy to make the thousand uh, uh, easy uh, thousand uh, working completely good components, but it was hard to make these ten faulty components. The the Americans were very astonished. So this is the uh. The moral of the story is they were Japanese are so perfect in all their work that it's hard for them to make their master their work, that it's hard for them to make anything faulty. So uh, uh, so in this verse, a lot says that be excellent and I my presence will be in you. Thank you, Satiksa, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Very beautiful story you brought in. And this is uh, possible in Japan because they really uh, respect the humans. Not only humans, but all the beings. You will not believe that there is no sound except bird sound when we cross the road. There are no policemen to um, morally, uh, you know, tell where to go or, or to restrict people's movements. So the whole idea of this Japanese uh, concept is that there is no God as an idol form. They don't worship a God form. They worship the nature, the nature which is within you and outside you. And so whichever things they do, they do it in perfection, thinking that it is for the nature. It is. They don't worship an idol such like, uh, you know. So that is one good thing about uh, Japanese culture. We come to uh, 26 verse and we'll see few more. So see children, in every verse we have four, uh, almost every verse has a four uh, glories. In total we'll have 72 glories. I think we have completed last time 12 and till now 8. So just remember these glories and whenever next time you go out and venture in the nature, if you see that Ashwatha tree, if you see river Ganga, if you see an ocean, maybe you go to Chennai, or you go to Cochin and you see the beach, please river that ocean. Take that small ounce of water in your hand and pray to Lord Vishnu that you are in this form of Vishnu. Uh, you are in the form of ocean himself and take the blessing. Now, Utsav, you are worst. <clears throat> yes, please. Ashwatha Sarva Vrukshanam 
देव प्राणम च नारदा देव वर्षी नाम च नारदा गंधर्वणम चित्र रथ गंधर्वाना चित्र रथा उत्सव आपका आवाज नहीं आ रहा है हरिओम ओके सो थैंक यू उत्सव इट्स युअर वॉइस वॉज युअर चैंटिंग वॉज गुड देर वॉज स्लाइट डिस्टर्बेंस बट वी कुड हियर अप टू चित्र रथा अमोंग द गंदरवाज एंड फाइनली सेज कपिला मुनि अमोंग द सिद्धास सो वॉट डू वी नो अबाउट रार द मुनि एनी वन ऑफ यू वाई इज द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ ऑल द मुनीज और सेजेस but he is also one of the messengers of the devtas excellent and he doesn't mince the words whatever is said from exactly the same thing he will tell or he will and he can travel from one loka to another loka like it is you know if you say wifi and 5g and 6g how can a person travel from in that time he can travel in time and he can travel from one planet to another planet so that's why that's why he is the greatest of all the munis narada muni he had direct access to any god at any time any given time okay that's why he was the greatest there are a lot of stories of narada ashpatta tree now don't confuse it but understand that peepal tree which is a tree which has a um, lot of branches and it is huge it lasts for almost 300 years so it is huge and in the form of is vastness it shows that god is in a very vast form so whenever you see ashpatta tree next time just join your hands and pray to the lord because it symbolizes lord's vastness the glory of lord have you heard about this tree in any verse any any chapter okay 15th chapter do you remember we had talked about the tree branches the karma phala and the fruits everything we discussed 15th chapter okay now 27th verse is by i think uh, tanush right am i right yes go ahead tanush ऐरावत गजेन्द्रीप तनुष को God tell us that among the horse, know me to be uche, uche shravaha, be gotten from the churning of the ocean of nectar. I am Aravata, amongst all lordly elephant, and the king amongst human. So Lord yes. is trying to say that amongst the horse, I am the uche shravam. and when the churning of the ocean was done the elephant known as aravata 
was came from there so lord is saying that in elephants i am aravata and amongst the human i am the king of human hari om and then we will know you are ending the class ending your first hari om sir yes thank you thank you very much anush so let us know a little bit about churning of ocean anyone knows about this story i hope you all know about this story so there was a fight for the amrit amrit which you drink and then you will get moksha or the all the great powers so daiva daiva asura were fighting the gods and demons thought we have to fight out who will get the amrit and how does the fight start how does it uh, start they want to churn the amrit from the ocean initially they take this mandara parvat a huge parvat a rock which is because you have to churn the ocean so you have to have something so solid and vasuki the snake is used to churn the ro- uh, rock but you know what happens they the rock doesn't stabilize and it falls down so vishnu comes in the form of kurma avatar the tortoise and he gives the base for the rock to get churned the ocean to get churned so finally after a lot of a struggle by both the parties and then lot of things comes out of the ocean what does the first thing come out children anyone knows the first thing comes out is hala hala wish it's such a poisonous wish that uh, the poison it is such a poison that one drop anything of it, uh, even one drop of it can kill anything from the devas to the asuras to everything yeah it will destroy the entire humanity or that world it will destroy so the only power to take that in is with a lord shiva and that's why when he takes in and parvati stops it at the neck region otherwise he would also might die of that poison so powerful and that's why he's sir, he's called nilakanta sir and from that time hmm. onwards he keeps vasuki around his neck yes vasuki around his neck everything has the symbol has some meaning i will tell you so once this uh, this poison is taken care of then 14 items comes out of the ocean what in one of them is uchchashrava the horse which is actually having some say seven some day five heads and also wings and it is the horse for gods indra is the lord of indra so he is the king of horses which serves the lord of gods like king indra it can fly it can it has the fastest uh, faster than mind thoughts it can run that is the uchchashrava horse and airavata it's a white elephant some say there are seven tusk some say five and many trunks and it's a huge elephant again it serves lord indra so this too is mentioned in this verse and there are many more things which come from it in the next verse also it will be explained but children what is the meaning subtle meaning of this it is that our mind always have this churning of thoughts good as well as bad and the bad thoughts always try to win over the good but finally with a controlled mind like if you take the uh take the adhara like the kurma avatar here vishnu if you make him as your um guiding force your base yes base in life then always good will win over the evil and the amrit which will the nectar which comes out of it will be only served to the good in yourself and then slowly the bad thoughts the bad things which happens to you in the mind will be washed away okay and with that good thoughts when your mind is fresh and energetic receptive what will happen you will whatever you do in your life like the kamdhenu whatever you want from her you will get so whatever you want from your mind to you want to get you will so get it the condition of the uh, kamdhenu is that you can never ask for it in greed you have yes. to ask it only when you need it correct so then only will she give it yeah so this 14 things which is good 
if your mind and first thing whenever you sit for meditation always the negative thoughts will surface you try that negative or something disturbing will surface out that is hala hala wish and that you give it in the hand of lord shiva because he will take care of it so this is the meaning the destroyer subtle meaning of ignorance ignorance correct so this is the subtle meaning of all the stories every story in puranas have some meaning with your self not that there is in the big ocean and someone is churning the rod and getting halala wish that is a story but the reality is all that churning is happening in your mind here and let it churn out amrita before it wish will uh, the poison will come but it will be taken care by shiva so with that we come to the last verse of today by pragnya over to you hello everyone uh, i request you all to uh, chant the verse after me ayudhana maham vajram ayudhana maham vajram धेनु नाम अस्मि कामधुक धेनु नाम अस्मि कामधुक प्रजनश्चास्मि कंदर्पः प्रजनश्चास्मि कंदर्पः सर्पानाम अस्मि वासुकिहि सर्पानाम अस्मि वासुकिहि थैंक यू वेरी मच so the the literal meaning of the verse goes as follows i am the vajra thunderbolt amongst weapons and kamadenu amongst the cows i am kamadev the god of love amongst all causes for procreation and among serpents i am vasuki so next so as um as sachin sir mentioned before each story from the purana definitely has its own significance it's not like an event that simply took place and that is written and we have to uh, learn about it so in this verse um uh, shri krishna uh, after talking about the elements that we can see him through nature he talks about where he appears in the purana so uh, uh, the verse starts off with taking the um, we have done the the story of uh, sage dadichi before uh, let's just recap on that so um the bhagavatam recounts the story of the the demon vritas vritrasura who was created to kill all the deities and he had a boon that no existing weapon could kill him so uh, they uh, so then um, uh, indra was very scared because he began to conquer the indra loka so he decided to go to maheshwara for help and then when shiva learned about it he de- they both decided to go to vishnu for his assistance so when they went to vishnu vishnu uh, told them about uh, the sage dadichi who was so sacred that um, a weapon made by his bones would, would be the uh, would be the sole solution to kill uh, vritrasura so uh, when um, indra went to dadichi um, the only request dadichi had before uh, he could give away his bones was that he wanted to see all the five main rivers which were the uh, uh, holy rivers of that flowed through bharat at that time and uh, indra made them all uh, flow through this one particular central spot where dadichi saw it and then um, he attained moksha and then indra as you can see in the first picture uh, indra gave it to the his um, uh, swordsman and they made the vajra the the vajra out of bone and this was the uh, this was the thunderbolt weapon that was used to kill vritrasura so shri krishna says that ishwara the ishwara as continuation from the previous verses ishwara is a vajra among all the weapons and because it it is considered so because it is powered by austerity and penance so it's very uh, it's very important so next slide so uh, na, uh, as um, sachin sir also mentioned uh, in the previous verse uh, our mind is like samudra mantana there is definitely we have bad thoughts and good thoughts we have distracting thoughts and we have thoughts that are more focused to our lives so uh, our mind has a capability to generate desires that prompt us to act so then shrihuna talks about Ka- kandarpa also known as kama deva who is a hindu god of love uh, or the or desire so desires are the seed of creativity because with the, without desire we couldn't have invented anything because they say uh 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 so you need to um, have the desire if you want to make something new but on the other hand you also have bad desires that 
uh, like selfishness, lust, etc. So, and as we have seen so far throughout the whole Gita, it it does not allow desire. It does not. Uh, it does not talk ill or it does not talk bad about desires as long as it falls in the within dharma or righteousness. Only if it deviates from that path or would cause harm to anyone, then only uh, will it um, will it uh, tell us to not follow that desire. So to take an example again in the Samudra Mantana, Kama Denu is a cow that um, that appeared from the uh, churning of the mountain. So she has the ability to fulfill any desire that she's approached with. But as Vastik said, it should not be of greed. Otherwise, the, full, the request will not be fulfilled. So uh, we'll correlate that with the normal, uh, our cows that we raise now. So even the normal cow has the ability to provide milk to a family in need. So symbolically, Kamadenu also represents our mind because it can generate all kinds of thoughts, good or bad, out of thin air. And uh, Sri Krishna says that this desire is also required for the next generation to progress because without that desire, humanity would stop. There would, no, there would not be the evolution of the new human beings. So uh, then uh, the last part of the verse talks about Vasuki. So he's the king of the snakes and is seen called around the neck of Lord Shiva after um, he was called Nilakanta after consuming the poison. So he symbolizes our ego or our ahankara and the sense of only myself, I, or basically when you're talking only about yourself and you think nobody is better than you, you have achieved the greatest mindset that you possibly can. So if we are able to tame our ego, keep it in, keep it within our reins, then it becomes an ornament as in the case of Lord Shiva. Have, we have never seen Vasuki taking control over Shiva. Vasuki has never poisoned Shiva because Shiva has kept him in control. And, and the same way we should keep our brain and our desires in control. So if we do not tame it, then it becomes dangerous and can strike us when we least expect it. So uh, this uh, so if you don't tame it, you, you'll, ha you'll have sudden surges of emotions. One day you'll feel very superior and the other day when you see someone doing better, then you'll start feeling inferior again. So you won't have the balance of mind. So Sri Krishna says that the Vasuki is, uh, is another expression of Ishvara, which uh, tells us to keep our mind balanced and calm. <clears throat> so next slide. So in conclusion, whenever we see someone devote their life towards a selfless cause, then our mind generates positive and dharmic thoughts. When our desires are right, yes, and our ego is in check, we should realize that it's all Ishwara's exp uh, expression that is seen within us. I hope you all understand this verse. Thank you very much and Hari Om. Hari Om, Hari Om. Beautifully explained, very nicely. All the four glories of Lord explained so well. I really appreciate it. Um, with this, I come to the end, but before... Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Children, those who want to leave, they can... Uh, silently leave and we meet in the next class. Anyone has a question? I